We have Girija Pandey joining us live on NDTV 24-7 at the moment. Thank you so much, Mr. Pandey, for making time for us. Well, he's also the former president of Tata Consultancy Services Asia Pacific, part of India's largest business conglomerates. And currently, Mr. Pandey is also the chairman of Apex Avalon Consulting in Singapore. Mr. Pandey, let's dive right in. India is one of the strong performers. This is what the IMF has said. Growth is projected to remain strong at 6.8% this year and 6.5% in 2025. But as an addition, the IMF also said it may revise China's full-year GDP growth forecast upwards after the country reported stronger than expected 5.3% growth for their first quarter. How are you seeing this? Yes, so the Indian performance is quite stellar. There's clearly no doubt about that. And I think all of us have been watching that growth come on. Uh, the China story is a little mixed. And I think the IMF has also mentioned it. And that is precisely because of three or four reasons. They have a huge debt overhang between the local governments and the property segment. That is a huge overhang and they need to address that. The second issue is they also have a falling birth rate and aging population, which they need to work out. There is a huge amount of restructuring going on in China. Uh, I have done a lot of business in China uh, and I know some of the challenges that they face. And therefore, I think the IMF has conservatively uh, put their growth at 4.6% rather than the 5% which the government has estimated or the first quarter number of 5.1%. Because I think the growth is not yet picking up because of some of these uh, drawbacks and this will take a little while uh, there is a level of deflation as well that is happening in prices and retail prices so the chinese uh, growth which normally drives the asian growth right because it is the second largest economy in the world has actually slowed down other parts of asia as well india is not so coupled with china so india is growing on its own uh, steam at uh, 6.5 percent so i think that's where we are we see the Asian story very linked to uh, the Chinese slowdown. Right. As far as the global economy is concerned, it remains remarkably resilient with steady growth and inflation slowing almost as quickly as it rose. But, you know, Mr. Pandey, worryingly, the IMF now estimates that there will be more scarring for low income developing countries, many of which are still struggling to turn the page from the pandemic and cost of living crisis. That's true. I think we must remember that the big change that uh, the reason why we are the, the growth is at 3.5 is because the U.S. has performed spectacularly and no one expected the U.S. growth to be so high. And in, in a way, because of that, the inflation has not come down to the level we wanted. And that affects every country in the South, in the global South. So you've got three or four challenges in the global south, which is what is worrying them. One is the supply chain problems because of all the geopolitics that is going on, the oil price, the commodity prices. Second is that the interest rates haven't come down as fast as we expected. And I think in a way, after seeing some of the latest numbers from the US, maybe there will be a little pause before the interest rates are brought down. So unless the Americans bring down the interest rates, the rest of the world uh, has to suffer. In fact, the Fed chairman also spoke about that. We will get to that later in the bulletin. But as far as this IMF report is concerned, Mr. Pandey, it also warned that while inflation trends are encouraging, the IMF chief economist said that we are not there yet and that medium-term growth prospects remain historically weak. Yes, there is a pessimism to, in their forecast for the medium term. There is no doubt. I think there is a lot of issues. We must remember there is a huge climate story that is going on um, and the impact of climate. Then there is this impact of inflation, which hasn't yet come down. Then the whole supply chain because of the geopolitics. So there are quite a few imponderables. Until we see a, a common, a normal trade pattern that was there earlier, we are going to see these uh, anxieties for the medium term. And that's what IMF has projected. Right. The IMF has stressed the need for huge global investments for a green and climate resilient future in this report as well. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Girija Pandey, for joining us live on the World 24-7. Really appreciate you making time for us.